Hey y'all, it's Rosie, and in this video we are making a strawberry shortcake cheesecake. If at any time you want the exact measurements, head over to my blog, iHeartRecipes.com. I'm starting off with a box cake mix. I'm using a white cake mix, and I'm going to pour all that cake mix into this large mixing bowl. I'll remove all of the lumps by smashing them out with my whisk here, and then I'm going to grab a box of strawberry gelatin. Open up that package and sprinkle the gelatin in the bowl along with the cake mix and then we're going to whisk everything until it's nice and well combined. The next step will be pouring in some milk. I'm also going to add in some vegetable oil at this time and as you see I'm mixing on a low speed. Add in some egg whites and if you can eat strawberries, I'm allergic to them, I can't, but if you can, add in some mashed strawberries at this time as well. So once the cake mix is all nice and smooth, we're going to grab two 9-inch cake pans. Spray both of them with some non-stick spray. Actually, not non-stick spray. You need baking spray. My bad. And then you're going to fill them up three-fourths way, okay? Our next step will be making sure that our oven is being preheated on 350 Fahrenheit. And once it's nice and hot, we're going to bake the cakes on 350 for 20 minutes or until done. And this is what the cake looks like. I actually let my cake cool in the pan for about 5 minutes, then I transferred them to a cooling rack, okay? And now we're going to let these cakes cool down, and while they're cooling, we can work on our cheesecake. So in this bowl here, I have 16 ounces of cream cheese. I did not let mine get to room temperature. I don't know what I was thinking. Please don't be like me. Let yours get to room temperature. You'll also need to pour in some heavy cream at this time, not to be confused with Cool Whip or Whip Topping. Heavy cream. And now we'll add in our eggs, but you want to add one egg at a time. So once all the eggs are in there, we'll add in some more ingredients. And one of those ingredients will be sugar. Let's add in our granulated sugar at this time. And next we're going to add in some vanilla. I'm using regular, real vanilla. Don't use the imitation stuff. It does not taste good. So once the vanilla is in there, you're going to sprinkle in some cornstarch. And then you're just going to mix your batter until it's nice and creamy, or your filling, I should say. It's not really a batter. And don't forget, if you want the exact measurements, it can be found on my blog, iHeartRecipes.com. So once you're done mixing up that cheesecake filling, we're going to grab a 9-inch cake pan. You want to make sure you add some parchment paper at the bottom, and then we're going to start adding in about 3 cups of that cheesecake filling. Smooth it on out, and once you have it all nice and smooth and good to go, we are going to place this cheesecake in the oven for 30 minutes and it still should be on 350. So this is our crustless cheesecake. Now we're going to work on our crusted cheesecake if that makes any sense. How about cheesecake with the crust? So you'll need some butter cookies for the crust. We're also going to add in some butter. And you'll also need some ice water. Okay, so let's add in a little bit of ice water at this time. And then we're just going to mix everything until it looks like a cookie dough. So here in my spring form pan, I did spray it with baking spray. I'm going to actually use my fingertips and press that cookie dough-ish crust at the bottom of my pan. And you want to make sure it goes up a little bit. Then we baked it for 15 minutes on 350. So let this cool down completely and then we'll add the remaining cheesecake filling in there, okay? Once it's in there, you want to make sure it's nice and smooth out now we're ready to bake this cheesecake and we're going to do the same thing we're going to bake it on 350 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes so while that's in there we're going to work on our crumbles for the cake you need some butter cookies and I'm going to show you how to make the red crumbles and then I'll just explain on my blog what I did for the white crumbles because that part is really easy so for these red crumbles you will need some uh, butter cookies we're using butter cookies of course you will need some butter and then you're going to sprinkle in some strawberry gelatin mix, okay? You'll also need a little bit of water, ice water, and a couple drops of red food coloring. Here I have a cookie sheet that has some parchment paper on it, and I'm going to empty out my red crumbles. Here are my white crumbles. This is just the cookies, butter, and water, okay? I actually just told you, so you really don't have to go to my blog to know how to do that. So now that's on the cookie sheet. We baked it for about 10 minutes on 350, and now we're just going to crumble it using our hands, okay? Once we're done doing that, everything but the frosting is done. Let's make our whipped cream cheese frosting. So you need cream cheese, softened butter. You also need some uh, vanilla 
and some confectioner's sugar. Mix those ingredients and add a little bit of whipped cream, not whipped cream, sorry, whipping cream, and you know what, you're good to go. So here is the cheesecake. This is the crusted cheesecake. I'm going to show you how I assembled the cake. It's really easy. Crusted cheesecake first, a layer of the red cake, the non-crusted cheesecake, and then another layer of cake. So now that you see how I did that, I just go on ahead and I just frosted up these cakes really easy. You don't have to frost it perfectly as you see I didn't. And then you just top the cheesecake or the cake with the crumbles and make sure you also get the sides as well okay and there will be lots of crumbles if you follow the recipe that's on my blog iheartrecipes.com you don't have to worry about running out of crumbles but that's it it does take a little time but it is so worth it at the end don't forget if you want the exact measurements head over to my blog iheartrecipes.com